As Chanel Quintero heads into a new year, she's hoping the future's brighter. We were here, we were together, but we were separated. After so much pandemic learning, the longtime special ed teacher at PS35 in the Bronx says it's time to start getting back to normal. She's built into her lesson plans and the walls of her classroom, what she calls bringing back the happy. Bring back the happy is really our main focus. We want our kids to come back loud and boisterous. Um, quiet hallways are not fun hallways. They're not working hallways. They're not engaged hallways. We analyze the school's own data to give a progress report on how they're performing as a school system. There are some bright spots. More students are finishing school. Graduation rates are up for the school year after the pandemic started compared to the year before. And fewer students are dropping out. That number is down by 3% during the same time period. I think we can credit educators and families with those, those numbers. Erica Kitzmiller is a professor who teaches people how to become teachers and how to think about education. They're facing a number of challenges and opportunities. But the numbers also highlight new challenges. Last year, we tracked a big drop in student enrollment compared to before the pandemic. That also means less school funding. And there's another issue. More students aren't showing up on a regular basis. Chronic absenteeism is up to a percentage we haven't seen in years. Kids who don't come to school regularly are much more at risk of dropping out, particularly if they're in ninth or 10th grade in high school. As for how elementary school students are doing when it comes to math and reading, we don't know exactly. The standardized tests weren't required during the height of the pandemic, and the results from last spring haven't been released yet. That's one more litmus that teachers are going to be evaluated on. If the, if the scores dip, what does that mean? I, that's going to be a question that I think people are going to grapple with. And with fewer students and fewer dollars, teachers may have to get even more creative in how to keep students engaged. There's a big piece where we've just kind of upped the ante for creativity. Because you're doing more with less. Yes, yes. Less children this year for us, potentially less staff members, less money to do things. Um, so we're really looking at what we have here and, and using the, the most out of what we've got.